guys, it's me, Terry Silverline Minute, and on today's episode of Silverline Inc., I got to meet my oversoul, Minerva, and um, it was so interesting. I had been looking forward to that for a long time, and Heather was even looking forward to it, kind of poking me and saying, I'm ready, I'm ready to come trance channel Minerva. So we did that, and it was um, it was really neat. She's, she's interesting. She, you can tell the apple doesn't fall far from the tree sometimes. But um, she came to talk about twin flames and, and what that really means. There's so much misinformation on the internet. And um, and when I started my journey, I was so confused about it. Was I in a twin flame? Was I not? Because I've met some of the pr criteria, but not all of it. And, you know, it, it led me to believe, it made me get crazy. I thought that magical things would happen. And it, I mean, like truly magical things. <laughs> And it just didn't. It's not like that. But, um, you know, I had to spend a couple years with my head in the clouds. So magic seemed like the most appropriate outcome. <laughs> so she, um, you know, she took a away a lot of the myths and helped explain it. And, um, and I really wanted to know why I'm having two of them. And I've been kind of on to something for a while. And she wouldn't tell me why. She, but she kind of, the way she spoke, she let me know, no, it's not because of that. There was a reason and that I would figure it out, and I sure did. I've spent the last few weeks um, crying about this, and I don't, I'm not being whiny. It's just that's how I release, and it's like every day I take some time and just think about why I had the two and what that means, and it's just, it's a little, it was a little overwhelming for me, and I'm still trying to process the ripple effects of that. It's trippy. So if you are in a twin flame relationship, I have decided that I, I might be the next best thing to an expert about that. <laughs> and um, I'll talk about that. I'm going to talk about the whole twin flame experience in the upcoming video, my, my personal experience. And even if you are not in a twin flame relationship, you are still on earth to find self-love. So I think that what I will have to say will be relevant to everyone who's on this spiritual journey of healing. I'm so tripped out by what I learned. Maybe everybody else already knows and it took me a while, but I don't know. Sometimes these things are obvious. It's, I call them my common sense epiphany. Like I ought to have known better, but I didn't. I needed that last little bit of information just dropped into me before I can piece all the parts together. And there's always room to grow and learn, but I kind of got this part figured out. So I'll be sharing that in my next video. The secrets will be revealed. Ugh, look out to me. And we also, Minerva and I, talked about the walk-in process. I know that um, plenty of my viewers believe or are choosing to walk in, in their, to their next incarnation as, um, um, you know, a relationship with our, our stardust group, the Sarsar. And, um, and then, you know, there's others. It doesn't have to just be with the Sarsar. And, and if those of you that are just kind of following along and interested in, in what that means to have a walk-in experience. She kind of talks about that a little bit. And what you can expect, sort of. I mean, it's still kind of vague because I haven't done it yet. Some things you just can't know about until you experience them yourself. And then she also speaks about um, what happens when um, you, you just don't kind of listen to your own gut and, and you constantly get readings and she kind of accused me of, of asking questions, the same questions all the time. And I guess I do sometimes, but sometimes I realize that things have changed. And she wasn't, she wasn't giving me any, any points for that. I wanted to know, for example, where one of my soul group of M6 are, we have this boy named No Plants because he doesn't have a plan. So I was trying to figure out where he is, like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> and she said, you always ask that. We always tell you the same thing. Well, the answer is always different. Last time he was in Iceland or something. The time before that he was in South America. And the time before that he was in North um, uh, Pacific Northwest. So that was a legit question. And she wouldn't give me any, any answers. And um, I asked if guides ever lie to us. And she had a few things to say about that. So it was very interesting. Oh, and she also spoke about the future of Stardust. You know, it's it's a finite thing. Stardust is not going to go on forever and ever, but it has had its life extended. So she's going to talk about that and, and what up with that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. So I'm excited for that. All right, my intro is pretty chill. Mm, um, I'm just, I'm kind of distracted because I'm getting ready. I'm 
all dolled up. I'm going down to Elisa's today. We're going to meet Sarah. We're going to drive down for a cookout. I haven't seen her since she got lost in the woods. <clears throat> so even though I know the story that she posted online and text messaged my little group with me, I haven't heard the firsthand story. So I'm going to go and spend some time with my friends today. And maybe I'll meet some new people today. I don't know. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thank you for always being um, so good to me with your comments and encouragement. And, um, and I know, you know, I've, I've learned, I've become convinced that people who are meant to see these videos will. So I don't feel as narcissistic and egoistic about sharing the stuff about me because somebody's meant to hear this stuff. I didn't go for the shit I went through for nothing. You guys better learn from my experience. Don't waste my torture. All right, you guys, thank you very much. Okay, ooh, got to be my clapper. Here we go. Twin flame bullshit. Minerva Trance, channeled by Heather. And action. Okay. Okay. I just clicked record. And we both have, like, beating hearts. And the reason for this is because it's the big day. I get to meet Minerva through a trance channeling. <laughs> and in case you don't know who that is, Minerva is my oversoul. And not only is it my oversoul, kind of want her to describe this. She's your oversoul, too. I don't know if that's, I've already told everybody, I don't think that's secret business whose oversoul else she is. I'm going to spill it. So yeah. Sorry. She's just, it's really strong. Wow. She's super, like, I can't uh, move. You want, to, you want her to come in your body right away? <laughs> it's so weird because my body is, my heart's racing. But at the same time, I can't, I'm like jello. <laughs> wow. Minerva sounds like a good drug. I'll try some of that. I know. It feels like I'm on like some, like I popped some really strong Vicodin or something, you know. Vicodin mixed with a little crack, maybe. <laughs> fentramine or whatever. If anyone's been on that diet pill, fentramine, this just feels just like that. <laughs> okay. Well, do you have any last words or you can't think? You feel like I'm going to die. No. <laughs> nice no. knowing you. <laughs> Okay, I'll take off my glasses. Or do you need one? I'll let her choose. Okay, well, I'm going to go under. Okay. She's all coaching me through it. I know what I'm doing. Oh, my gosh. Ah. I was less graceful than I wanted it to be. Mm. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Don't talk to me yet. <laughs> but you can cry. Take that moment. Take that moment. You cry. How do you know I cry? <laughs> I'm not ready to cry yet, but I will. Don't worry. Okay. I think I have a better grip on things Ooh. hi over so me what the fuck are you doing hi me this is not as exciting for me as it is for you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm so nervous look you see my hand i am so amped up from this will you explain who you are in in your words to me and my posse <laughs> I go by Minerva. It's not really the name that's had significance to it. Just I like the name. I think it's okay. so sexy, but also mysterious. And then at the same time, it's Minerva. It's different. <laughs> Nobody's named Minerva. Well, a goddess or some god or whatever. Right. So you're Minerva. not you're not affiliated with that. You just like that name. I do. It's the energy behind the name that I like. The way it flows out is the way it is why I chose it. Okay. You know, I was going to ask that. <laughs> and it's important that she found this paper before she went. That's so funny. She's going to write a note to Josh and tape it on the door so he wouldn't interrupt. And she picked up that paper from a long time Can you time see ago. it? Yes. Is it too high up or too low? It's perfect. Great. So this is me. 
And everybody has this part of them that's like this. Some are much more complex than others. And I'll explain how we all bleed into each other in a minute. So for right now, let's just focus on our little group. So we have Minerva. And let's just say that's the energy of our soul family, the intimate one, the inner circle. And it breaks off because those are, it's not really I'm an entity all on its own. I am now, but it's more of like your, all your collective energy has created me in it. It makes it sound like you, you're all not part of the same soul and you all are to a certain degree. And it's not so much like a twin flame because technically we all are each other's twin flames. Just some you have a much stronger bond with than others. And within this circle, let's call it a circle, you have the six. For us, it is six. Some people may have more. Some people just have two. And it creates the energy of Nerva. So I am more of the collective consciousness of all six of you. It's something I created you. We created each other. Not One did not come before the other. We all came at the same time. That so, is confusing to me because I know there's no time or hierarchy there, but... How did we do that? Can you put that in words, how we're creating at the same time? Because if I tried to say one go went before the other, it would be completely wrong. And I don't want to give you the wrong answer. That is confusing. Okay. But that's just how it is. Okay. So you all created at the same time. If I, all when, I, when I get back to your house, <laughs> to, to my original house, will I understand all that stuff? Yes, and you'll understand it even before then. You're meant to understand this. You're just not quite there yet. You'll get there. Give it some time. Okay, well, um, on that, I have finally resigned to, I believe, is the fact that I am supposed to share my personal journey of my relationship with you and the six. Is that, is that mm. my true? Yes. You're supposed to explain how soul family, soul cycles work. Soul cycle. I never heard that before. How okay. we're all connected. I wanted to talk about the bleed through. So we have oh. all these different circles. Let's call them little clicks because that's okay. kind of more hip to your lingo. Okay. So you have these clicks that are created and each one is at different sizes. So that for us, for the Minerva circle, we have six. And then there's other circles, but we're all connected. Each of these circles, think of them as lines that are connecting each other. And it all kind of bleeds through into a huge spiral. It's like a circle. Oh, like that's how I'm connected to Jason's Vesica Pisces, maybe? Is that what you're kind of mean? Yes. It's, it's just a giant swirly. And everyone's connected. Every single soul. And then we're all part of the same universe, the same source that makes up these tiny cells. Let's think of these circles, these groups, these cliques as cells. And we're the <laughs> mitochondrias of inside those cells. And okay. then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. We can't have one with that together. And we're all part of the same thing. Okay, that does make sense. And, you know, we've heard that all along. But I think just probably because I'm a human, I don't know, or an incarnated, I like to know my closer people. I like to feel like a family. You well, like to get to know the cells closest to you. Yes, that's exactly it. Oh, okay. So is it a secret on this particular show who our other six are, our other four? I tell it. I, that's not. not a secret. You can no. tell. You mean me tell you who they are? You... Yeah, I want you to do it. I wasn't planning on it, but you do it. Oh, no, you do the talking. Oh, okay. Okay, so not only is it me and Heather... But, oh, God, I don't even want to say names anymore because I got weird about that. Um, I got... <laughs> ba <laughs> okay, no, I'm, okay, I'm going to go ahead and claim Eric because I'm a little bit proud of that one. I like to brag and drop his name whenever mm -hmm. I can. So Eric is one of our soul sibs, one of our six, or sex tuplet, not twin. And no, I also have well, my first twin that I did my twin relationship with, and I'll just say his name. That's Michael. That's the one in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And then there are two more, our mystery guys. We have no plans in Tennessee. What, and I know that, you know, I'm not supposed to ask personal stuff, but can you drop a couple clues about those two? No. <laughs> not even with, when? Is it in the, is it, okay. Will you tell me where no plans is right now? What continent? <laughs> I bet that doesn't 
matter, but you're just trying to let You always know ask these same know. questions. And we always give you the same answers, or we'll give you something a little different just to make you happy, but it's the same thing. Ah, all right. Well, no plans. I guess he was, his sole contract is to not have a sole contract. So he's all over the place. Is that, is that kind of true? He doesn't have a plan? Okay. His plan is to have, um, to go with the flow of things. Just, so in that sense, he does have a plan, and that's the huh. plan. Okay. I like that. Hmm. And this person, and I'm sure he's not the only one that's ever done that. If, when you have that kind of la life, are you, um, this, you li this life all the time? Oh, and lost. That's the point. That's the ah, point. Okay. It's enable, it's to teach you how to find your own feet within yourself because you always relied on things happening around you to guide you and tell you where to go. Other things are happening to other people and you just follow them along. So you probably lived a lot of lifetimes where you just followed someone else's plan. So right now you're following your own plan and it's really nothing. And it's to just get to know who you are through these obscure, different experiences. I bet he's having fun. Can't wait to ask him. Aww. We're always having fun. Even when we're in pain, it's always fun. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce all over the place because you know me. Can I ask about the galactic family then? I want to know. I really want to understand our relationship with these ETs because you know my theory about our hearts. So you have many different lifetimes with, and I know what you're talking about with the, the sorry, sorry, I think that name is still very funny. If, and that's the name I gave. <laughs> anyway, um, you do have many other lifetimes with them. And it's not just as a star star, it's, and it's more of you feel connection with the souls that you're meeting. And so every oh. extraterrestrial that we bring to the table for you, because they have to pass through me first. And the reason why each soul circle is different, I am fiercely protective of my little buddies. I call you my little buddies. No one can touch you. No one will dare touch you. I will kick their ass. <laughs> yeah. Energetically with love, of course. Um, <laughs> But they are all souls that I have picked out, and they're all beings that you've already met before. And the reason why you feel so connected with them is not just that species, because you're feeling that species that they are. You're connecting with um, their experiences. And the reason why you feel so connected with those different extraterrestrials is because you are technically are them as well. Yeah. Because you know that soul. And that one's close to you. I always pick the ones that are closest to you that are incarnated at that time with the species you're talking with. Am I making sense when I say that? Or is that a little? No, uh, I get it. But I'll have, I have a question that might help clear it up a little bit more because my twinnies, I have such a, a connection with them. All six of them. I'm calling all of them. My well, six of us, five of them. But I feel like with them, there's lessons to be learned and strife to be had. But I feel like with Avery, it's just pure. And is that, is there a reason for that? Or do I just, like you out? need to have an easy one. You're going to have to have an easy go at it because when you have these different relationships with humans, they're complete shit. Humans cause drama. You need one with no drama. You need one that's completely stress free. You need a safe place to go to, to turn to, to remind you love still exists and it's still out there because you're going to get to a point and I talk way too fast, but you're going to get to a point where it's going to be way too much. You're going to be hurt so many times by so many different human men. And then you're going to have this Avery man yes. to make you feel safe and comforted. And I'm talking too fast. <laughs> okay, do it. So is it the same for him? No, yes, absolutely. You're absolutely his his safe place as well. You are like his home to him. I hope he never realized he needed. Yeah, I love that. I can't wait to connect with him more, you know, more. That's gonna happen, right? Oh yes, definitely. Okay. Um fuck, I lost my thought already. It was a good one too. I'm so excited for you to do the connections with him. It's gonna be magical. Really? Oh, you're not gonna give me a win. Within five years, can we do no, that? No, I am not going to tell you when because the when always changes depending on where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, gosh, Minerva, I'm so sorry. I forgot my question. Don't okay, I'm going to go to a different one because I'll probably have a bazillion of them. Okay. I'm going to make this personal about me right now. 
It's all, always personal. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's always about me. But do you, not do you specifically, but any, all, do guides lie to us sometimes? I feel like I was misinformed from Jean-Francois. <laughs> they, I wouldn't call it lying, but I would just say sometimes, oh my gosh, how do I say this without pissing everybody off? Um, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> half truths. Half truths. They're half truths. They don't want to tell you the whole thing, so they tell you only a little bit at a time. And if you keep asking, you keep asking, eventually we're not going to talk anymore, and the medium is going to be scrambling to find something to say. And usually, okay. not always do they say, I don't have anything. Usually, they, they just tell you something. They'll okay. just say, it's this. But if you're in like, if you keep asking over and over and over and over again, and you just keep getting the same answer and want a different result, we will just straight up lie to you mm -hmm. just so you can feel the difference what the answer okay. is because sometimes you need to feel that different answer to know that oh that doesn't feel quite right so that you know internally you already know the fucking answer why are you asking us i don't know we certainly love validation don't we but i have a true question i'm truly curious and i haven't asked it before so maybe i could get an answer but jean francois said that i was done with my 20 work and all i'm doing is waiting for them to come back to me but i feel like that was a big fat lie because i had to push through some shit Okay, Tony work for you, it depended on your definition. You were going off of his definition of what twin work was. Now, okay. with him, it was more of like just letting the fuck go of all these expectations. You have to go through this. Yes, yes. You don't have to go through it if you don't want to, but you're choosing to, and that's just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But he was just giving you an alternative choice. Okay. By well, telling I'm you, here, this is the way it is. But it really isn't because it doesn't have to be. Anytime any spirit guide or whomever it is that you're talking to gives you advice on something, you don't have to take it. And sometimes we'll give you altering different advice just so you can feel the, what's that, the abstract, the, the, the opposite. So you know what you feel inside to be the true path for you. Because we are not here to hold your hand and spoon feed you everything. Right. You have to go through it your own self. And so if you keep asking us for all the same answers all the time, what do I do? What does this mean? We're not going to tell you. We're here to help guide you, not hold your hand and practically carry you through life. And you came here to go through these struggles. And if we were to hold your hand and do everything for you, you would not learn a thing. Right. That makes sense. I, and otherwise, why come here? We're already just going to have to be fed. The and there's people that constantly go and get readings done. It's going to get to the point where we're not going to get anything substantial anymore. In fact, I probably get total confusing messages. So, yeah, and then, and you know, that that, on purpose. That's what well. I was going to say. So that you know, we we start relying on ourselves. That's yes, yeah. you rely on your own power, and that's our job is to make you more aligned with yourself, not to solve your outside problems for you. We're here to solve your internal problems, not to solve them, but to help you solve them. Not outward thing. Fuck that. That's them. We can't control that. We're not their guides. We're not there to help them. We're yeah. here to help you. So we're not going to help you. <laughs> by, you know, telling whomever the fuck to come fuck you because you want to fuck him. No, that's not how this works. We work on you first yeah. internally. We help you through that so that you'll be ready for some good fucking. From yeah, you're both of us. So pull a few strings. <laughs> okay, well, let me go back to that then because, you know, I understood that. Jean-Francois really told me that, you know, you don't have to do this one. I understand I had to do the first one. If not with him, then with somebody that was essential in my evolution. And I really thought long and hard. Well, not really. I thought for about 30 hours, but it felt like 30 days about dropping the next lesson and letting go of that twin. Yeah. And I, and I thought that I could, but then I thought, you know, and I don't want to, I want that experience. And if you really, really want something, then you can't let it go. So mm -hmm. my brain may have said, oh yeah, you can do it. But I really wanted to. And same thing with letting go of emotions. Yeah. You know, when you go through an experience, you want to like, you're so angry and you just want to let it go already. The more that you're like, I want to let it go. I want to let it go. It's kind of like the fact that you're just giving it energy. And the fact that you're thinking about how much you want to let it go means you really don't want to. It's kind of like a self-sabotage where you're saying, I just want to let it go. And it's yes. like, but do you? Because you keep bringing it up. Yeah. So that's another thing too I want to touch on. Because when I was so fucking obsessed with Michael and I fought it and I fought it because I knew it was futile. I knew what it was and I wanted to get off the fucking ride already. Um, but There I was that part of you. There's two parts of you and it's not like we control these things for you. You control your own selves. We're not, so many people say, oh, my guides threw this at me. No, we didn't. <laughs> you threw yourself at it. That's yeah. not our fault. 
you know, it's like blaming something else for your problems. You know, well, it, it was all you. And so when you're, you wanted to not feel obsessed with Michael anymore, there was that part of you and some people call it higher self, but it's still you. It is you. It's not separate. You wanted to go through it. Yes. I actually almost enjoyed my obsession sometimes. I, I clung See? to that, that weird dark place. Um, so with that, and, and Heine, Heather's higher self told me, quit fighting it because you're sabotaging just like you did. So mm -hmm. I'm still having feels for this, the second twin. And I'm at this place where I'm supposed to give him up too. But I know that, that he's not going to be gone forever. So I don't know if I gave him up it's or not. Right. It's <laughs> relinquishing the need for them to be right here right now. It's yeah. more than about letting them go as in not caring about them. And that's not what it means when we're saying to let go. We're yeah. not saying to just completely stop caring about them. Okay. We're saying to relinquish this uh, need that you need validation for them. Okay. The need that they need to heal you, that they're going to give you some kind of powers. Uh, we're talking about just uh, in more about like loving yourself, relinquishing the control that they have over you. Okay. you're allowing them to have does that make sense it does and my question so i think i think that i've done it then because i do still have feelings for him absolutely not, you're not gonna stop having feelings for them if I'm, you truly love them yeah then you, that love doesn't die it doesn't go away it just gets replaced with a different kind of love if anything so <sighs> don't beat yourself up just because you have feelings don't don't constantly question yourself did i learn my lesson because obviously you, you just need to stop. You overthink. Oh my God, you overthink everything. Stop. I know, I do. <laughs> well, then I'm just going to go ahead and tell myself that I did it. However, okay. having said that, I jumped back into ketosis, but I haven't lost one pound. Am I eating too much bacon? Do you know what the problem is? I don't know if I'm holding something emotional or eating too many calories. It's not emotional. It's purely calories. physical. Okay. You need to be... Um, On the bike. The creek. You get to a point in a diet where it no longer works. You need to add something different to it, something more to it. It's kind of like you plateaued. Yes, I do. Okay. You need to add something extra, meaning exercise or take away something more, which I don't want you to do because that's all so much harder and you're going to break your diet so much quicker when you do that. So okay. just add more exercise. Well, thank you for that. Thank you because I would have, you know, you're right. I don't want to give up the limited food I have left. I love my bacon and artificial sweeteners. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, good. Boy, I don't know. I think I, I don't even know. Okay, so I want to talk about soul dynamics. Some, oh, I know what I'll ask you then, unless you have something to say. And I have heard this answer before, but it's vague, and maybe I'm, I'm able to learn more about it. But What's the big surprise that Eric says is going to come our way when, when we all connect? He says it'll be like telepathy. Is that it, what it is? Or no, what it's more of like an explosion of feeling. <gasps> oh my God. That, that's the best way I can ex explain that. It's, um, you'll feel each other's energies. You already do it now. Yeah. But it's almost like you have to get in a circle, you know, combine each other's hands, you know, do a little <gasps> dance together, activate the power. But when you all meet in person, it's more of this will happen in person the first time, and after that, it'll become so much easier once you get better acquainted. With each other. We're all going to be in the same room? Yes, at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, except Eric can't be there physically. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> so it's almost a lie. <laughs> we'll find some way to get him there. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So what else about like soul configurations? I'm so fascinated by this and I'm not even sure what kinds of things to ask. Like I learned, Oh, Oh, you're not allowed to tell me that shit. You know how, um, the new twin is a split of fairy. Hmm. I'm wondering if Margello has a split. <laughs> no, okay. uh, it's too much work for him. Uh, really? What's Margella doing? Is, what is he doing? You know, when you split yourself up, so the souls, even if you're already split yourself up, you can split yourself even, up even more. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, it takes a lot of that energy huh. to do that because you're still on a subconscious level. You're still going to feel what they feel even if you're not even incarnate at the same time or even on the same planet 
or even the same galaxy or whatever dimension. Okay. We're still talk- picking up on that. Okay, let's let's break that down then, because there's so much confusion and ambiguity and false information, I feel, and everybody has their own truth. But I want to talk about twins specifically. My definition is a is like a, mm, a, a tw- I understand what you're saying that, you know, we are the six and we're similar vibrations, but. Okay. I'm just, know- talking, I'm just going to go on a, go. a rant. Rant. Fast. Okay. Your fast so talk? twins, <laughs> the twins, it really just means exactly what it is. You're an exact replica of each other's souls. That's where the term twin comes from. So many people think it's this romantic getaway thing and you're going to fall in love, blah, blah, blah. That's not really your exact soul because you're falling in love with yourself and you just want to fuck yourself. That's what it is. That's all I ever do. We all are fucking each other. We're all fucking ourselves because we're all the same soul. Everyone (laughs) is your twin twin flame. Everyone is your twin soul. Everyone's exactly the same. This is just somebody who's incarnated on the planet or somewhere else at the same time as you so that you can learn the same lessons or something different completely so that you guys learn all at the same time, learn different exper- through different experiences. You guys go through different um, growths. So you can learn the lessons that they're learning over there mm-hmm. on planet Hoogla. And then you, you on Earth, you're learning Earth lessons. And so it's like you're trying to get as much work done as you possibly can. But then you end up becoming together as one. Now, people who are talking about the romantic twin flame, mm-hmm. I don't like using that word either for the sake, because it just leads to too much confusion. That's not your replica of your soul. That's someone that you have a very strong romantic soul bond with. Now, you can say twin flame if you want, because it sounds so magical. and well, I hate it. That's- you know, but that doesn't mean that's your exact replica of your soul, because it's not. Do I have an exact replica of my soul? Because what, what's, the, what's the point? I'll get to that in a second. It's what's the point of falling in love with somebody that you're going to meet? You don't meet your twin flame really ever. The true twin flames never really meet because you're too busy learning different lessons. What lessons can you learn when you guys know each other? Good you know, point. you're supposed to not learn from each other. I mean, you can. There's really no rules. But the thing is, the whole basis of it is for that not to happen. You know, for you to be in totally different places. Right. So when you're talking about the romantic thing and people are talking about, oh, they want to pull away and all of this, it's like it's that person that's really close to you, someone that you trust the most that's going to help you learn self-love. That's really what it is. And that's because you're going through the most sh- hardest lesson of self-love and you're learning it outwardly through someone else. Okay. And that, I guess in that sense, that kind of twin flame relationship, that's pretty much why people go through that. And people feel like they have to be with their twin flame. You do not. Just like you don't have to be involved with family members who treat you like trash. Hmm. Did you see how well I handled my shit? I was a rock star. Yes, you were. Very proud. So it's, it's no different than that. When someone's saying that the romantic twin flame, which I'm not going to use that term. I'm just going to call it romantic soulmate because that's what it is. Okay. And a lot of people are going to resonate with this. People are like, I'll strongly disagree. I don't care because don't it's either. still romantic soulmate. You're just saying twin flame. Yes. But it's still the same thing. I'm just using a different word for the same thing. Yes. So you're talking about how they pull away from you, things like that. That's just you learning self-love. You're learning your own self-worth, your own self-power, and you're not giving it to someone else because their validation means nothing. Oh, It's so all within you. Why did I take on two of these relationships? Was I that fucked up? No, it's not about that. <laughs> you just didn't learn it with Michael and he was ready to move on with his lessons in life. He needed to move on. Really? So did I, so did I not and, plan and for it, two at first or? No, you know? not at first. No. It, really? <laughs> so with Michael, you know, it wasn't that, it, no, nothing's ever too late. I want you to, I don't want to make it sound like you fucked up. Because then that's not the right answer. You no just chose know. this path. You just chose this path. That's all it is. And he didn't want to keep following you down this path, so he left. I don't He's blame like, I'm that. done. I hated I'm that done. path. And you know what? That was actually perfect because it gave you another opportunity to get, let him go. Okay. Yeah. That mm-hmm. hurt even more, huh? That's so trippy. And so when, when in my evolution did the plan for number two come up? It was, so it was something when Michael decided he didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't even know he, he ever wanted to. So 
I don't even like to say higher selves because that implies that this is another version of you use. Wow. So the you, I'm just going to say you. Okay. And so you and Michael, this, well, Michael decided he wanted to move on and do different things. And, you know, you can't control him. So, so he said, okay, so let me strategize something. And we came up with really good ideas. So your spirit guides don't make these lessons for you. You come up with them yourself and you tell us, and it's kind of like we give you feedback on it and we tell you, oh, that's a good idea. Or you should kind of do it things this way. It's kind of like we're talking to each other in a group, in a meeting and strategizing different alternatives, but it's ultimately wow. your choice to say yes. We control nothing. Okay. And I just want to put it out there for people watching, because you already know, my first twin relationship was near identical to the second. What I was with that, I mean, so many things were exact. It was like, a concentrated version of the first, but not nearly as severe. That was tricky. But did I do that just so I could recognize it and relearn? And I felt like it kind of put me back together. Parts that got destroyed with the first one. I don't know. It's too early to tell. It's, it's almost as if I can't, because it would take away from the lesson of it. Okay. And, and I know that sounds like a cheap cop out and I guess it is, but that's true. <laughs> So you can't tell me why they were identical, though. Was that just so I'd be aware of it, or you can't tell me? It's that? not about awareness. Okay. Huh. But I am gonna figure because that out because they are identical. It's the same thing, and not because you needed awareness, yeah. but because you still needed to go through it. It's all it about like, awareness. Okay. I just didn't. I need it. I need it. I kind of feel like that too. It's like sloughing off that last little bit. I had to. I just wasn't didn't finish it the first time or something. Wow. And all that stuff I went through with with Michael was that. Just this life, or was that the other lives too? Because I mean, that was so brutal. Is that typical of a twin relationship, a twin vibration relationship, soul, whatever you called it? So, romantic soulmate relationships yeah. that are used to teach you self love. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even have to be romantic, they could mm -hmm. just be anybody is out there to teach you self love. This just happened to be a romantic one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I mean, it didn't have to happen in other lifetimes, only in lifetimes where you're to conquer self-love in that one. The reason why you're doing this part of your self-love journey is to help teach others to conquer it as well. So they don't have to go through all this bullshit. Some of them are, you know, made to, and, and it's almost as if they didn't really, um, it's not that they don't have like a contracted idea for how to conquer it, but you're part of that contract. We all work together. So part of your contract with doing these videos and all that is to teach other people self-love. Oh, I'm talking way too fast. <laughs> no, you're okay. It's okay. Well, I want to. Well, I didn't get my question answered. Why was it so brutal? Why did I feel crazy? When I felt like loony bin material. Okay, there was a couple of reasons for that. One was because you just barely awakened. Okay. All right. And two, because he is so close to your soul, and you're feeling energy is way too strongly, and you just do that in and of yourself. He feels so strongly about people, so you were just psychotic about the man. It was like this really cocktail was. of things that just made it explode. God, it was Plus weird. Plus, you're supposed to. That's why we made you that way. That's why, not we, but you. You, me, we as in me. Collectively, we. I get it. <laughs> the me, we. <laughs> the me, we. But not the guides, we. Yeah. That's confusing. Your guides have nothing to do with this. So you decided to have that cocktail of things to make yourself this way, the way you are. You wanted to have that experience. So you're going to say, why did I feel that way? Then the answer is because you wanted to. I wonder why. I have a theory that, like, the, I feel like the suffering I did during that time will be in direct proportion to the joy I will reap from here on out. Is that a reasonable statement or not necessarily? No. But let me explain. Some people say, we're like, but that doesn't sound like me to agree to that. That's your ego talking. Of course, you're not going to fucking remember what you agreed to. What would be the point of existing and doing the lessons if you already know the outcome? Okay, that's a different story with, you know, this one. But if you already know the how and the why, then why go through it? Just skip ahead to the end. Right. And you came here to do that. People are like, then why are we existing? It's like, because that's what life is about. That's what being alive and incarnated means. You do all these things so you can learn lessons. And every, and it's not just humans that are doing this because it's not just about humans. It's about everybody else. Every other species of existence, trees, animals, whatever it is, any other planets, they're all alive so they can experience and learn because anything that's a spirit isn't really learning at the time. Because they're just soaking in ah. the information that their incarnated selves are learning. Okay, so let, what will you say to this? Because, you know, I'm sure you've heard me say this. But sometimes I feel like you're some fairy girl's bitch doing your bidding and doing all the work so that you can evolve and grow while I'm sitting here suffering. What would you say to the humans that pull that crap? Oh my God, no. 
That's just, a, that, again, that's the ego. That's a whole like, I'm a victim, you boo-hoo, no, it's not. You did this. I mean, and then that's blaming game. I guess you, know, you don't like that, that's fine. But the thing is, is you chose this. You decided to go through this. And I know it's shitty and it sucks now and it hurts, but that's why you're doing it. You don't learn lessons through being happy all the goddamn time. So there are lessons and your lessons then. God, how much can you guys learn up there? Holy cow. That's the whole point. It's okay. The whole point of this, it's not, I mean, you can get bored. There's nothing to do. It's all peace and happy all the time. So you want a little bit of a uh, difference. So abstract. And that's not possible way up there. So you've got to bring it down, back down here. Is it a reasonable theory that people in the spiritual path have more drama than regular people? Because we're trying so hard to Probably. learn more and evolve. Probably, uh, yeah. In a wrong. different sense. It's much more dramatic energetically. Because you're not dealing with things outside yourself. You're dealing with things inside yourself, and that's so much harder. Uh, how do you uh, let go of an emotion you don't want to feel anymore? Instead yeah. of, how do I let go of this drink I don't want anymore? Just drop it. But, so I answer your first question. How do you let go of the emotion you don't want to hold anymore? Oh, you got you to gotta heal that wound. You got to give yourself healing. You got to give yourself time to cleanse that memory, whatever it is that's causing that. I feel like a lot of my healing, it was just unconscious, just primal, just screaming and crying without even really knowing what it was. Is that reasonable or did I all process it in those journalings? Okay, because you don't know what it is doesn't mean it's not, doesn't mean it was unreasonable. There was feelings that you had that was, you know, just felt up from everything you've been through and you had these pent up emotions, you just weren't inward with yourself you weren't asking yourself where is this stemming from okay. there's always a source for what you're feeling it's just just because you don't know what it is doesn't mean there wasn't one okay yeah see i'm like that now now like when something happens to me and i'm a victim of something i'll you know i'll feel sorry for myself for a few minutes but then i'll go why is this triggering me because this is you know this is there's a reason for this so find that silver lining and don't waste this opportunity for growth so I kind yeah, of mean control over everything. Everyone, you know, feels like there's a false sense of, uh, I guess you can feel powerless because you don't remember what you wanted to do, but you do have the power to decide you don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, that's so interesting. I'm going to use my friend Sarah as an example because she just truly decided to not be sad and brokenhearted over her son passing. And she's totally chosen to embrace the new journey that, oh, I'm so proud of her. I love that. That's a choice. Ending grief is a choice too. You don't feel like it is, but and some people like to live off of that that they don't have a choice. Yeah, because they like things to. They want to feel. Um, they want to have an excuse for why they feel the way they do, and they don't want it to, because there is no fault. When I say it's your fault, you did this. I'm. I don't mean that there is a fault. It's it's not a bad thing. You did this to yourself. Right. You want to do this. There's such beauty that's going to come out of it. But your human mind and your ego, it's bad to feel pain. It's bad to feel sad. It's bad to go through all these things. It's really not. They're all good. All emotions are all good. All of them are. Do you understand when me as a human says that's a bunch of shit because it doesn't feel good when I'm here with a broken heart and, you know. Yeah, but it, it is afterward. Yeah, well, after stronger and empowered you feel afterward. You won't, you wouldn't have been able to feel that if you hadn't gone through that. Okay, okay, I'll buy that. It's like going to the gym. You really don't want yes. to go. No one wants to go home. to the gym, <laughs> right? Ever, nobody wants to go to the gym. But how are you going to get all that fat off? You need right. to go. <laughs> how are you going to end that plateau? All right. Okay. Okay. Like, like a car. You want that fancy, sexy, you know, Ford from the nineteen forties car but it's all broken down you got to fix it nobody wants to fix up the car you gotta buy the parts gotta work hard for it that but is a good like way to say out. it because so many people want instant results too mm -hmm. and I, I crawled out of my deaths one little itty bitty baby step at a time i got faster but you know maybe is that why you know go back to that why i went so crazy was it because it was like a crash course and i did it immediately and quickly no, no. uh you went at a certain pace that you could it took a while but it's not about taking a crash course. You needed to feel that way. That was your 
inner journey, your own personal journey, because this way there's multiple reasons for that. But one of the main reasons is that when people go through this, you're like, I already sympathize. I've been through that already, but you've been through it in such a powerful way that you can truly relate to people even more so. Even people that aren't going exactly what you're going through might be a little slightly little different, but you know exactly the emotions they've been going through. Okay. You're awesome. You're doing it, girl. And I get so excited because I'm so used to being able to just give you the energy. So I feel like I have to talk fast, fast, fast to get it so all out. Why are, you, why are you a girl? I know you're not a girl, but why are you? I'm being, not a girl. I'm not, I'm not a girl. I just want to be a girl because you relate to a girl. I can be a dude. Okay. Do you want to be a man? I can grow a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, big boy. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, what was I going to ask about that again? Ooh, I like it when we're boys, though. Those are so much fun. We have so much sex. Really? That's much easier. What? When, when is my sex going to start, girlfriend? Aren't you, like, feeling I can't sad? I that. Because it starts when you're ready to have it started. Like, not really when you're ready because your ego, you are ready to go. But it's more of, like, spiritually, emotionally. Uh, hmm. You know, we have to go through all the you, – right. you'll know ah, right. you know when you get there. Right. You'll know why. You'll know why when you get there. Right now, you're really? just like, Why? This sucks. I'm waiting. I've been through all this. Blah, blah, blah. I know. Mm. Give me my candy. <laughs> all right. It's, you know what? He's going to get such a prize. Is he worthy of the prize that is me? Right now, no. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's got some shit to do. Okay. <laughs> so interesting. Okay. So, God, every time I have a question, I lose and I'm just, I'm worse with you for some reason. Oh, I'll, but I will tell you something really cute though, but I'm going to tell them something cute. When we were in Vegas, we were kind of bashing on my boys. Okay. You were so, so much- on our team. Thank you for going against the boys that make me mad and being on my team. That was so cute. Heather got such a kick out of it. She's like, she's that so weekend, okay, so this goes the same with the, any other girls kind of weekend okay. or the boys weekend. Right. But with this weekend, um, and this is the same with all the others, you had such a healing experience. You both were meant to go through your growing spurts at the same time and be there for each other for support because you really were going to need each other. And because, you know, we're all the same, you know, from the same cell. Um, so you guys feed off each other's um, experiences. And since so you guys both go through the same lessons but in different ways, and you guys still right. get the same finish line. Right. I love that little, what's, what's that word? The, not an acronym, but the, you know, like a metaphor. Aha. <laughs> Metaphor for that. I love the little metaphor she made up. Uh, you all end up at the same finish line. And I needed you guys, we needed you guys to get there together because you guys were seriously going to need each other and talking to each other or the phone over it wouldn't have done the trick. You guys needed to feed off of each other's energy that whole weekend. And that's what you did. That's why you felt so rejuvenated, even though you're still going through your funk. You still could you, Ugh, rejuvenated. Why is she so gassy? She's always like that. She's disgusting. Maybe you could work on that for her. Oh no, it's just her diet. <laughs> it's just in here, and I feel it, and then it comes up like up here, and then it goes down, and then it goes up. Oh, She's got GERD. Let's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna help her. We're gonna change some stuff. She'll get worse. So um so I feel you know I mentioned my star star heart earlier, and I, and I've already asked this, but tell me again. Oh, Heather and I are good forever and ever, right? She's yes. my constant. So your relationships is going to change as you go on through your lives as much as that. We actually extended the life of Stardust. It's actually a new change that we came into. So when you went through this last healing with the self-love thing, you actually downloaded a lot of new information that we wanted to be able to tell humanity, but we didn't know which outlet to go through. So we decided Stardust was the best one. I just slow down. Okay. I love Stardust. That makes me so happy. So... I love it when I talk really fast. That's really annoying, and everyone's going to have a hard time keeping up. That's okay. Try and keep up. Uh, I love my train of thought. See what happens Stardust. when I pull down? I know. We're both doing this. Okay, Stardust has a new direction, and it's going to last longer because we need yes. more stuff. Yes, we need more people to be watching, and people are going to be um, – you're going to get a little bit of an influx of viewers, but because you guys don't want to market it or do any kind of promotions or anything, mostly on her part – it's only going to go to people who are ready for it. People who are searching for those questions already and they're going to stumble upon it. And so that's why you're only going to get people who are going to fully, really resonate with Stardust. That's why you never really had any real issues before because you keep it local. You keep it confined to the space of people who are just already ready to see it and already been looking for it and they found it. Um, 
And also, after Stardust ends, your relationship is going to change. It's going to be like a weird <sighs> migration from one thing to the other because you're going to feel almost like something ended, but your friendship hasn't ended. So you guys might feel like awkward amongst each other for a little bit, but eventually you get over it. But your relationship is going to change throughout this lifetime, different times, because you're going to be at different places and you're going to need a different friendship for those different places. Okay. Interesting. It's a little bit scary, but. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean you're ever going to grow apart. You never will. It's just how your dynamic work is going to change because you're going to need a different dynamic from each other. There's going to come a point where there's not, it's not really going to be about spirit between you two at all anymore. It's just going to be about, you know, who wants to come over for the holidays and spend time with the kids. Fuck, really? Yes. It's going to turn into that. Because you know how much I miss having a family. <laughs> and then as you get older and you're nearing, and it's more like closer towards both of you are nearing your death, you both are going to die around the same time. I think it's, I don't want to say who's going to go first, but one's going to go first and the other one's going to follow soon after. Um, but wow. it's, um, you guys are going to go back to that spiritual towards the end of your lifetimes. Like I'm thinking like the last 10 years or something, okay. you know, and I don't mean it, it's like in the last year. No, it's like 10 years. <laughs> so it's pretty long human wise, but you're going to go back to that more spiritual sense because you're going to need to, that's where, that's how you guys are going to cross over so much easier. Oh, wow. We need crossover easier. It's supposed to be easy already. Yeah, it already is easy, but it needs to be like... It's, <laughs> bark, bark. What's a dog? Bark, bark. Anyway. Can, can you give up? Um, you know, I, I want... Um, I want to talk about like different walkouts and walk-ins and, and how the transition really works. Some people yeah, do that happy. stuff. Thank Some you for reminding me. Some people in the subconsciously have already been preparing it for their whole lives. That's why it's so much easier. Some people actually wanted it to be difficult for themselves to make it difficult. Um, and don't ask me why. That's, that's their path. Right. <laughs> their fault. So different. Because even in the spirit world, when you're transitioning, it's a kind of a growth thing in some experience that you're having. So each experience that you're having, it's for, for a certain purpose, even in the spirit world. How's and, Heather's going to go? How's her turn? Yes. So it's going to be instantaneous, but because it has to be quick, it's because you two are walking in. That's why how, how easy it has to be. It's got to be go, go, go. So the second you cross over, you're going to be ready. You got to be starting your healing right away. It's not really any time for life review, nothing. You're just going to go right away to healing and then you're going to walk in because you want to, in the healing, it's not like you have to be encased in a glob of goo that heals you forever. It's just going to be real instantaneous. Yeah. The way. I'm walking in too. I thought I was absorbing. What am I doing? It's the same difference. Okay. Same difference. Okay. It's the same difference. Doesn't okay. matter. So okay, but the one I walk into maintains both personalities. She's not going to leave, or no, it's uh, it is you. So it doesn't matter. Okay, that's right. It's already me. I'm not so okay. Oh, okay. So Heather, the one she's walking into is that her too, or is that no, 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 no? That's why I say the same difference. It's just that it's already you and you, but her, it's not her. But you guys are doing pretty much the same thing. The way the process works is the same thing. All right, God, that's gonna be cool. I love my story. Who wrote my story? Is it Fairy Girl or you? You wrote your story. Gosh, I was a nut. You are Fairy Girl. You wrote the story. So trippy that I'm a fairy boy too, right? But it's not me. It's fairy girls, other piece. How many fairies are out there? Not a lot. Don't worry about it. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to talk more about that walk-in stuff? Mm, no. Or sh should I ask? Can I ask well, a question? What? Some people may ask how difficult it is. Oh. It's only difficult once you get into the body because then you're just transitioning oh. and you're just confused about who you are as your identity. Okay. <laughs> Sounds just like amnesia, but, you know, now you got a whole new body. <laughs> God, that'd be weird. <laughs> um, so do you have any information, any just like scoop, like reading material, like reading stuff for Heather and her future, like her book or publisher? I don't want to tell her stuff. anything about her future. She already knows how it's going to turn out because she is in control of it. Okay. There's nothing I could ever tell that girl that she doesn't already know. 
Really? Am I the same way or not necessarily? No, no because you can't see the future. She does. She okay. needs to see the future. That's how yeah, we how did I make you that cool present? I feel like you didn't want to. You didn't you weren't gonna benefit from it. Okay. I feel like she's not like going through the same lessons you are. Yes, she already is. <laughs> Just yeah. posted you in a lie. You, she were doing the same. Now I was talking about with the whole love issues with okay. the boys. <laughs> right. I did it through boys. Yeah. Then I get sex at the end. You know, there's a silver lining. But right. not everything is she seeing. She doesn't see everything. So when she when a relationship ends, she's not going to see that coming. Mm, okay. Not all of them, at least. Some of them she said she does because she's meant to because it's it would hurt too bad for her because she is so sensitive. Some people who can see the future really easily, it's not because they have this power. It's because it's need to be prepared. They're, they are so sensitive they wouldn't be able to bear it. So they need to mentally prepare themselves for what's remember, to come. Remember how much she fell in love with me in Vegas last weekend? Remember that all her stupid dances? I oh, love her. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't see the future. So. Will you elaborate a little bit on my next show, my next big thing, or whatever it is, or how I got, I want okay, something, give me a nugget of something exciting in my future. Uh, you already know the answers already. Why would I tell you the same thing over and over again? I don't know. Like how, I don't, I have no idea how I'm going to support myself one day. Oh, you no. don't have to worry about that. There I'm you go. Worried. There's your little nugget. Oh, well, you're a brat. <laughs> You don't have to worry. I'm not going to tell you your future. You don't have to worry about it. It will be handled. You have chosen to handle it. Here's my theory about that then, about you not telling me too. Because at the beginning, it's like I was so confused and so sad. I feel like I got a lot of information. But I feel like now I'm in a place of creating. And if you tell me what's going to happen, I won't create it. Is that reasonable or not necessarily? You can, you can choose that. Either way, I just don't like to give away the answers. What's the point with you? I'm not talking okay. about anybody else because you're always asking these questions and I'm going to be the one to put my foot down and say, I'm not going to tell you, even if it's going to be a half truth. Okay. Well, that's okay. And well, what is your reason for not telling me anymore? Is it because I'm supposed the same to start thing. my own shit? Okay. No, because you keep asking the same things. You want to know the same things over and over again. And you're asking, what's my future going to be like? Can you give me a little nugget? You already know you've been told these things. Oh, I know. I wanted an extra nugget. No. <laughs> No more extra nuggets. You ran out of nuggets. We're out of stock. Damn. All right. Yeah, I had a thought the other day. I'm like, I'm like a regular person now. I don't know what my future is going to be, more or less. And that's okay, because you know what I do know? It's going to be great. It is. You know, you know why I know that? Because I know that. And if you know it, it's your truth. Yeah. That, and you're going to create it that way. If you want a great life, you're going to have a great life. So it is. So it is. I'm so glad to meet you. How's she doing? How's her body? Is she getting tired? She's fine. The ears are hurting from these things. Yeah, they're not very calm. I don't like those kind. She has to get squishies. Have you ever been trans channeled by a different being somewhere else? Will you tell me, like, what kinds of, or give me an example or, or general or anything about the cool stuff that Eric says we're going to start getting into, like the new channelings? Because I just oh, feel like. So, really, what it's about. It's, it's not just you guys doing this. There's a bunch of other people mm -hmm. getting into this that they <laughs> – it's new information that's ready for humanity to hear. Before Gosh. they weren't ready to hear, they were at a certain growth level where they're here, here to listen to certain amounts of information. So Eric is part of that, and he tells a lot of, like, uh, part truths, half truths. He's even uh, been truthful about this <laughs> on his whole blog that – you know, tell, he doesn't tell the whole story because humanity's not ready to. And uh -huh. now you're ready to hear this next part, uh, build on to it, because uh, you're at that point now. And the others who have caught up, so people are talking about, there's this huge shift happening. It's 5D. Yay. Well, you're there. Here's new information. More growth. Congratulations. <laughs> so you're not going to give me the information today? Just that no, it's not going to be ready. Okay. Because, you know, I'm so glad to hear that because... I mean, I know that you can always grow and stuff, but I feel like I've kind of capped out. Like, I know about manifesting. Yes, you already tapped out of everything. Everything. Yeah. You got that information. You soaked it in. You let it sit for a while, and you grew from it. You grew from that information you learned. Now, you can say that so many people have said, we reached 5D. You have, I suppose. Uh, if I you want to use that, that name. I don't even know. It's just another label. It just means you grew. 
that all it means. And people want to put, you grew to this level, you grew to this level. It doesn't matter. Are there truly dimensions or is that just human words? And I mean levels, not like parallel universes, like a higher level? vibrating or whatever. I don't know. Like, it's not higher or lower. Because I've heard mean, people say things like, I've channeled the beings from the 12th dimension, blah, blah, blah. And that just that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. How I feel. I mean, to them, yes, because they want to, you know, to them, they feel higher. But there's really no levels. Um, in a physical sense, there are other dimensions because there's some who are not three-dimensional like us. They're two-dimensional. They're flat. Oh. You know, in that sense, there are dimensions because in that – Right. But not in the whole vibrational-wise. We're all – there's no levels to it. It ebbs, it ebbs and flows. Just because that you channel them when they're in the 12th dimension doesn't mean they're going to be in the 12th dimension tomorrow. They may feel a little angry tomorrow. So yeah, go down a little bit. I feel we're fluid and it's our mood and the things happening to us. And that's going to go against so much of what's been said before and people are not going to like it. And that's part of the learning that's coming next. We told you a half truth. Yeah. Here's the whole truth. Here's part of more okay. of it. It ebbs and flows. There you go. It would have been and too much at first. <laughs> and I don't, I don't really, I haven't really had too many haters or shit talkers towards me. The ones I have, it didn't really bother me too much. How's Heather with that? Oh, she's well, going to be thicker. Thing because she's going to have a much bigger audience with her books. Stuff, so she needs to go through uh, this thicker skin thing she's going through. She's way too sensitive. It is hard. It is a hard lesson. I'm going to help her as much as I can. It does feel icky to feel judged by other people. I wonder why I'm so thick skinned about that because I feel like I'm a big wussy baby too about some stuff, but I think the haters are kind of funny so far. That's they are. Yeah. They're just confused and scared. That's all it is. Yeah. I don't really fault them for it. It's, I, just don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. I have to go now. Okay. Well, you know, I am so happy to meet you in this way and I know that it's all our choices, but put in a good word to um, go ahead and have this happen again one day, okay? Come back to my show. You also, by the way, people, I know I said it, it's your fault, you did this. It's not, it's no one's fault, but I just want you to know that it's not some, you need to get out. It's not some invisible force that's causing these things for you. I want you to know that I'm here to take the fear out of it. So you don't feel powerless anymore. I'm trying to give you back your power. Yes. Thank you. There's a lot of people out there that really feel so big to me. And I'm like, there really is a reason. I don't know what it is, but there is one. And they may not be at a point where they're ready to hear that. So then you're not ready to hear this, but you will be one day. So uh, come back and uh, hello again. <laughs> All, right. Come back. <laughs> All right. All right. I love you, Minerva. Thank you for being so fierce and taking good care of us. I'm going to speak for all of us and we love you. I love you too. Okay, I'm going to leave. Okay, bye. Okay. I can't see. Hi. <laughs> Do you remember? Remember some? I remember towards the end. I remember it's a dream. You know, like I could fixate on something and then remember it and then I'll go away. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Gosh. It's so weird because she's a lot like us. So I didn't feel like I didn't get that validation that I was channeling someone totally different because something didn't, you know, wasn't that well, dramatic change. She wasn't totally different. Yeah. God, I'm tripping out. This is what I'm tripping out on. Let us go ahead and tell you. But the whole reason twin number two came around was because Michael got tired of my shit and was ready to move on. No, oh, I remember see. that. Yeah, when you're talking about the whole reason why twin number two came in, and I'm like, I don't remember saying that at all. And then you said it's because of this. I'm like, oh, that jogs my memory. Okay. That is so <laughs> weird. I wonder if that's the reason that he doesn't come in 10 years because future me said, oh, something happened and he's not going to come after all. I have no idea. I don't, wish I would have asked that. But that's so interesting. Twin number two is never part of my plan. It was like a last minute thing. She wouldn't tell me why everything happened exactly the same way. But she says, I'll figure it out. That's so weird. I didn't know what to ask her. I made a list of stuff. I asked it all. My sarsar heart theory was not exactly correct. She said that um, it's just because there's been so many lifetimes together. And for me and, you know, for our sarsar relationships, 
um, well, was it yours too? I think it's yours too, that it's just going to always be good because in you know, our human relationships, there's always ups and downs and you know, trials and tribulations, but that's one love that's always, always going to be there. I'll have to review and see if it was you too, but I, specifically that was the case for me. I'm sorry. That. I am just really spaced out right now. That's okay. That's just me making it all about me again. All right. I'm going to review this thing and then I'll do my, my little you know, pre thing with the clapper, but thank you so much for doing this. I hope that you, um, I don't know. I hope when you come down or whatever, that you just feel good and, and that she puts the juju in you and all that stuff. I love you. And congratulations on your successful class today. Go eat some spicy hot fries and I ate a pretzel, a soft pretzel. Yeah, you gave her, you gave yourself indigestion. She's like, why am I so gassy? <laughs> pulled, pulled a bunch of Heather Burks on her. It was funny. <laughs> okay, baby, I love you. Thank you so much. I thought I'd be balling my brains out, but I'm just a little bit blown away. Or, yeah. I got to process. Okay, thank you. I love you. I love you too. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.